Good morning, everyone. So there were three men waiting outside a delivery room in a hospital. A head nurse comes out all excited and happy because all three, their wives, had just given birth. To the first, she said, congratulations, sir, you are the father of twins. Terrific, said the man. I just signed a contract with the Minnesota Twins, and this will be great press. To the second man, the nurse said, congratulations to you, too. You are the father of healthy triplets. Fantastic, he said. I'm the vice president of 3M, the company. This will be great PR. At that point, the third man turned and ran for the door. <laughs> What's wrong? Where, where are you going? The nurse called after him. As he jumped into his car, the man shouted, I'm going to resign from my office. I work at 7up. <laughs> it's ironic that Zachariah, who asked for a sign, got one that deprived him of speech until what had been foretold him had come to its full completion, while Mary, who did not ask for a sign, was given one that gave her great joy and prompted her to go to the assistance of her cousin Elizabeth. If Mary wanted to know how she could bear a son while remaining a virgin, she need only to look to Elizabeth her older relative, who, despite her age, was pregnant. If God could create new life in an older woman, he could surely do the same in a younger one, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary, though, does not require confirmation, but instead she responds in faith. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Jesus' earthly existence begins with Mary's fiat, with her yes in today's gospel. Normally, we consider the nativity, the Christmas, you know, Jesus being born as when he actually enters in the world, but that's not the entirety of the picture. That's when, yes, he was, gives, Mary gives birth and he's outside of her womb, but at the moment of Mary's yes, Christ comes into the world. The moment she says, may it be done unto me according to your will, Christ comes into the world. So it's her yes that makes Jesus present, not just for her, but for everyone in existence. My brothers and sisters, Mary's yes, her cooperation with God, is something to be followed, it's something to look to as a model for how to to conduct our lives. Because oftentimes, God's asking us to do something. Not now, he's not asking us to have another like miracle like Mary, but he is asking us all sorts of things all the time. If Mary's yes was able to transform the world and very literally to allow it to be saved, what can God do with our yes? How much different would the world look if instead of saying no to God, I don't have time, I don't want to do that, I'm tired, I got all these other things I want to do. Instead of saying no and dismissing his will, what if we said yes? What if we said more often to God, may it be done unto me according to your will? The more we can say yes to God, the more we bring Christ into the world. So Mary's yes brought Christ into the world our yes can do the same. The more we can say yes to God by helping at the food bank, by giving an elderly person a ride to the doctors or to church if they ask for it because they can't drive, the more we say yes to the things that God asks us to do, the more we bring Christ into the world. And that's what this season is all about. My brothers and sisters, today, and hopefully for the rest of our lives, we really strive to say yes to whatever God asks of us so that we too can join and cooperate with his salvific mission in the world and bringing Christ to everyone, everywhere. God bless you.